Good morning, everyone, and thanks for tuning in for another episode of Smart Fox TV. Remember, if you do like our videos, please subscribe. Welcome to Smart Fox TV. For 94 years, the Academy Award or the Oscars have celebrated and honored some of the greatest artists of our time. It is no secret that film is a dominated industry and that there is a lack of recognition for female actors and artists. Although there has been a positive shift in how the Academy or the Oscars recognizes and honors female artists, it may be a surprise that women who hold the record title for the most wins in Oscars history is not actually an actor, but a costume designer, Edith Heed. Her first win was for the 1949 film adaptation of The Heiress. Edith Heed walked away with eight total Oscars. For many years, Katharine Hepburn was the leading lady of Hollywood and has won four Oscars. In general, they have found that the percentage of women compared to men in any role was consistently below 50% for all years from 1912 until now. Before Hollywood's golden age, the industry was fueled by independent filmmakers and women was steadily increasing. From 1910 to 1920, women actors comprised roughly 40% of costs. Women wrote 20% of movies, produced 12%, and directed 5%. By 1930, acting roles for the women were cut in half. The industry condensed from a somewhat diverse collection of independent filmmakers and scattered the country with five studios, Warner Brothers, Paramount, MGM, Fox, and RKO Pictures, in which the studio system falls under the control of a small group of men and the women receiving fewer and fewer jobs. There were two groundbreaking lawsuits that caused the studio system to break apart. The Oscar-nominated actor Olivia de Havilland, who had an exclusive contract with Warner Brothers, sued the studio in 1943 and won. And in 1948, the U.S. federal government sued Paramount Pictures in an antitrust case, taking the power away from the handful of men. Let's look at some of the wonderful wins for the women. In 1962, Rita Moreno won an Oscar for her performance as Anita in the film adaptation of the Broadway musical West Side Story. She had faced much discrimination before she was in West Side Story, where she was offered stereotypical Latina roles. Moreno also is one of the few and the only Latina that holds an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. Julia Phillips was the first female producer to win an Oscar for Best Picture. She won for The Sting in 1973. In 1983, Buffy St. Marie became the first indigenous person to win an Oscar. St. Marie shared the award with Willen Jennings and her husband, Jack Nitschke, for the song Up Where We Belong from An Officer and Gentleman. In 1985, Kay Rose won an Oscar for Best Sound Editing for the 1984 film, The River. Jodie Foster was the first openly LGBTQ woman to win the Oscars for Best Actress. In 1989, for The Accused, and 1992, with Silence of the Lambs. Halle Berry remains the only black woman to win an Academy Award for Best Actress. Catherine Bigelow became the first woman ever to win Best Director. She won in 2010 for The Hurt Locker. Brenda Chapman was the first woman to win an Oscar for Best Animated Feature. Ruth E. Carter was the first black woman to win an Oscar for Best Costume Design. She won for her work in Black Panther 2019 and 2023. Hannah Beecher became the first black person to win an Oscar for Production Design for Black Panther. In 2021, Jamika Wilson and Mia Neal became the first black woman to win the Oscar for Makeup and Hairstyle. Ariana DeBose made history in 2022 as the first openly queer actor. Billie Eilish won the Oscar for the Best Original Song in 2022, making her the first Academy Award winner born in the 21st century. We hope you enjoyed this segment on the history of women and Oscars. Hi, it's Sally and I'm here with some interesting news. Did you know that you can decrease your risk for early premature death? by about 23% by just walking. 
According to a study of over 30 million people, they found that those who moderately exercised for at least 75 minutes a week were able to reduce the risk of early premature death. They found that working out beyond 150 minutes a week gave marginal benefits. This is good news for those who have trouble fitting in working out in their schedule. As according to a study, if you do at least 11 minutes of moderate exercise each day, such as briskly walking, you already get those benefits of um, reducing your chances of early death. Typically, soy-based meat products are highly unnatural and usually very much processed in its attempts to look and taste more like meat. However, Huggins came up with a meat alternative made from mycelium, which is the growthy part of mushrooms that you typically don't see or even eat. Because it's high in fiber and naturally has a meaty texture, in addition to having that umami flavor that you would taste in grilled mushrooms and steak, it's becoming the next big meat replacement thing. So if you want to try this out, go check it out at your local Sprouts. Thanks for joining us today for some interesting news. This is Kim. Hi, this is Sally. Hello, this is Tracy. This is Shane. And thanks for watching. Smartbox TV. Stay, Stay foxy. foxy.